Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Church celebrates the solemnity of St. Joseph, the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He was declared the patron of the Universal Church by Blessed Pius IX, and I'd like to today just look at St. Joseph as the model of consecration to Jesus through Mary. St. Joseph was chosen by God to be the custodian of the Holy Family, to protect and guard the Blessed Virgin Mary and the young baby Jesus through his infancy and up into his young adulthood. St. Joseph was chosen by God and given all of the graces necessary to faithfully and successfully carry out the mission entrusted to him, the sublime mission. Our Lady herself, who we recognize as the greatest of God's purely human creatures, full of grace, has great words of praise regarding St. Joseph. These are words uh, that come from Venerable Mary of Agrida, from her work, The Mystical City of God. So this would be Our Lady speaking. The whole human race has much undervalued the privileges and prerogatives conceded to my blessed spouse, and they do not realize what his intercession with God is able to do. I assure you, my child, that he is a greatly favored personage in the divine presence and has immense power to stay the arms of the divine vengeance. In all your necessities, you must avail yourself of his intercession. You should encourage many to venerate him and see that your own religious daughters distinguish themselves in their devotion to him. Whatever my spouse asks of the Lord in heaven is granted upon the earth, and on his intercession depend many and extraordinary favors for men, if they do not make themselves unworthy of receiving them. So these, that's what Our Lady says about her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, who we celebrate today. We often remark on the paradox of God's mysterious ways. Uh, Jesus, who is the King of glory and the Lord of lords, came in utter humility in poverty and weakness, and he chose to do that. And so it's not surprising that St. Joseph, who was chosen for this sublime mission, was himself a man of great humility and simplicity. And yet he is the patron of the universal church after Mary, and of course, Christ, who is the head of the church, in the body of the church, there is none greater than Joseph. And yet his humility is so great. And that's one point I want to make. Uh, we've been encouraged by saints, by popes, to entrust ourselves to Mary. The whole church and the whole world is entrusted to Mary. Saint Pope John Paul II did this uh, as recently as 1984, the, the famous consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And even though Mary and Jesus in the natural order and in according to God's will were subject to Joseph in the holy house, holy home there in Nazareth, Joseph didn't hesitate to subject himself, to submit himself 
uh, in love and service to marry his spouse. I'm reading from an article that talks about this uh, model of consecration that we find in Joseph. And it says, the essence of consecration to Mary consists in giving our hearts, meaning the very totality of our being, to her. It should be additionally pointed out that when we consecrate ourselves to Mary by entrusting our hearts to her, she in turn meets us in the same spirit, giving to us her heart. There is here an exchange of hearts. The two become so utterly united as to become one. Now, if we take this understanding of total consecration and compare it to St. Joseph's spousal relationship to Mary, we can see how his union with her epitomizes total consecration to Mary, which is another, another way of saying that, that is clearer is total consecration to Jesus through Mary. Joseph was necessarily united to the heart of Christ since the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus are inseparably united. According to Father Stanley Smolensky, Joseph's interior life was based on his singular union with Jesus through Mary. He was consecrated to Jesus through Mary by his espousal to her. Thus, Joseph's consecration is the epitome of all consecrations to Jesus through Mary. So, brothers and sisters, we have in St. Joseph not only a model of the highest sanctity of that virtue that Christ praised and taught and told us to learn humility. St. Joseph, the humble and just man who is recognized now in the church as the, the greatest of saints, was humble enough to submit himself to Mary, which of course points to the greatness of Mary. And all of this is in accordance with the will of God and the design of God. So brothers and sisters, if the church has found it fit to look to St. Joseph as our patron, then we should do no less than imitate his example and also consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary and thus become as united to Christ as is humanly possible through their intercession and imitation of their example. That's, that's how we can uh, enjoy that union. So as the world uh, stands in such need, and as we all do, of a greater love for Christ, let us follow Joseph in his example of consecration to Jesus through Mary and pray for his intercession for humanity and for the salvation of all souls and the greatest glory of God. Praise be Jesus and Mary.